Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning to all of you who are here this morning, to all of you who are visiting with us. We say good morning to you also, to our Facebook family and our YouTube family. We say good morning. We're going to ask now if Deacon Mac Lee will come and open us up with invocation. Come on, honk your horns one more time. Amen, amen, amen. It's good to see all of y'all on this bright, sunshine, and crispy Sunday morning. Ain't God good? Yeah. Who knows what the highest praise is? Who knows what the highest praise is? Hallelujah! It's good to be alive. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we come on this day. First, to give you thanks to God for letting us live, the, live, live through last night and to wake and see a bright, sunshine, and cool day. We thank you so much, O God, for the way you love us and the way you're always watching over us. Continue to keep us in your care. Bless the Psalms as they come forth. Bless the message as you send it through the man preacher. Bless all that we will do. Bless every horn that will hop, saying hallelujah and praise God to the highest. So keep us in your care now and be in charge of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, all right. Well, we have a very special guest with us this morning. We're going to receive Delegate Marcia Price at this time. Come on, show us some love for Zachary.
Come on, let's show Delegate Price some more love. Thank you, Delegate Price. We're going to take our souls to the polls. Really quickly, there's a radio station that you can turn your car to, and it's 90.1 FM. 90.1 FM. You can turn your radio station to that and hear what's going on out here also so the wind doesn't get caught up in your sound system. Listen, after this service is over, we don't want you to rush off. We want you to get out of your cars and fellowship. Those of you who feel comfortable, you can just drive around and park your car, walk around, give a few elbow and a few fist bumps for those of you who want to uh, fellowship with one another. You might not have seen somebody in a while, so don't rush off if you don't have to. We'll allow you a few moments to just fellowship one with another. Is that all right? Is that all right? All right. Well, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce for the first time as preacher here at First Baptist Church East End, my father, the Reverend Kenneth Jones, who is an associate minister at Noble Street Baptist Church. We're going to receive the praise team at this time, and then there is a word from the Lord. Come on, let's receive the praise team.
Amen. Let's give the praise team another piece of the Hallelujah is indeed the highest praise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Praise. So let me give honor to God. We give honor to the executive minister, my son, Reverend Jamar Jones. Amen. Amen. So you invited me to come and share this morning. Also, I give honor to my pastor, my father, Reverend Henry P. Jones of the Middle Street Baptist Church, for allowing me to come and share this morning. And to the officers, members, and friends of this great church. First Baptist Church of East End. East End. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you all for allowing me to come and to share. I won't be before you long this morning, but it's appropriate that that song was just sing because the word praise has been on my mind all week long. We lost a good friend in Nova Street um, past week. A young man, about 50 some years old, but he was kind of trapped in his teenage years. Very special young man, though. But he was a praiser. He walked everywhere, then usually around a five mile radius of where he lived. And he went missing for about three days. And when they found him, they found him dead in a restroom at a McDonald's on Airline Boulevard. And it, it was a really sad, fall, a really sad occasion for all of us who knew Tony well. So continue to keep the Tony Landon family in your prayers um, as you get down your knees at night and you remember, folks, remember him. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for the word today. I pray, God, that you would anoint me afresh now as I stand, God, and open up my mouth and say something that you would desire for your people to hear on this morning. What a privilege it is to say something about your goods, to say something about your love, to say something about your kindness, yeah. for you are truly worthy yeah. to be praised. In Jesus' name, yes, sir. Yes, sir. amen, amen. Oh, it sounds so good. Subject today, he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. Scripture this morning can be found in Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. There's a word from the Lord for all of us. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord that he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man that trusts in him. I want to lift up the first one. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Praise and worship are powerful weapons of spiritual warfare. Praise is an act of worship. In other words, you've got to do something. It's acknowledging God. You are saying something out of your mouth, like hallelujah, or you're doing something like clapping your hands or waving your hands or stomping your feet or doing your dance. Some people cry. Others cry out. They may cry out glory. They may cry out thank you, Jesus, but they are saying something. It's a wonderful thing, especially when we get to a place where our heart is full of worship and your mouth is filled with praise even before the service begins and the worship leaders does not have to tell you to give the Lord a hand, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. So they don't have to tell you to get up out of your seat or offer him a wave. They just have to say, they don't have to say anything to you because you brought it with you. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. You know that you know that you know that God is worthy to be praised, and so you bring that with you into the sanctuary, even in the parking lot. Praise and worship. Amen. It's work, though. It's action. It's, it's doing something. It's, it takes all of that and then some. When we think about all of the good things that he's done in our lives, hallelujah, the healing, the deliverance, 
the miracles. We should all be in the posture of praise. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be, but that is a sacrifice, they call it, a praise that you offer up to him. If you gave it to him just because the minister said to do it, it's not really genuine. It's not an acceptable sacrifice to him because somebody told you to do it. But when you willingly and freely give it up to him and you open up your mouth and praise him, then God is pleased because you wanted to give him. I know some people are quiet, you meek and mild, and you know, sometimes you might can hear a little hallelujah, a glory. <laughs> and we know that God has been good to you, but just say something. Because see, no one knows like you do what the Lord has done in your life. Amen. Amen. He's been good to me. <laughs> I used to be one of those quiet, meek and mild jokers, but not anymore. I can't help but give him praise. Because as I said in my subject, he's worthy of the praise. King David is before us today. And Bible students, you know him well. He is the one who, as a child, God and a shepherd, his father's sheep and with the Lord's help, he defended them and prevailed against lions and bears and other predators who desired to eat them. <laughs> Later on, he defended the armies of the Lord against the Philistines and his, these giant men led by the eight foot plus tall monster named Goliath. Armed with a bag of smooth stones, he slings them towards a giant and planted one right in the middle of his forehead. And we all know the story. He slew the giant and cut off his head. Oh, David was a bad boy. He had many, many reasons to praise God. Has God ever slew any giants in your life? Has he ever made a way where there seemed to be no way? Has he ever protected you from danger seen and unseen? Amen. Has he ever snatched you out of the jaws of death? Amen. If the answer is yes, and I heard him, you ought to praise him every chance you get. Oh, he is worthy of the praise. God always protects his children. He always fought our battles. He'll turn the tables on the enemy and have them dribbles going this way and that way while you're flying above the situation. I heard two or three witnesses. Y'all already know that God is Jehovah Jireh. He'll always provide for us, even protection and security. He make ways out of nowhere. He always fight our battles, and all we got to do is simply turn them over to him. Hallelujah. First Peter 5 and 7 reminds us to always cast our cares upon him before he, because he cares for us. So what are you doing fighting all those battles by yourself? They don't belong to you. They belong to the Lord. He's worthy, I said, of the praise. Because of all the things that David saw God do on his behalf time and time again, he says in the text, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because God has been good to him despite him. <laughs> God has been good to him, I said, despite himself. David lied, was an adulterer. David was a killer, had blood on his hands. But yet, the Bible tells us he was a man after God's own heart. It's interesting that Psalm 34 in the King James speaks a subscription as it opens. It says, a psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. This was a situation in the life of David where he had, a, where he had confirmation that Saul was trying to kill him. For he decided to flee to Gath and came before the king of Gath named Achish, or Abimelech, the title of Philistine king, or like, you know, the same as a, as a pharaoh uh, called in Egypt. But when David discovered that the servants of Achish were leery of him, because they recognized that he was the one that people were singing about. David and Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. So fearful, he decided to pretend to be insane. Scratching on the doors, slobbering, drool running down his beard, 
looking crazy as all get out. But it works. And the king let him leave. I see this as a really unstable or uncertain time in David's faith life. He attempted to flee his own country to go over to the preeminent enemy of God's people, the Philistines. That decision was not very well thought out because he ends up immediately having to deceive Akish into thinking he was crazy. Not a good look for the mighty King David, this mighty warrior, this anointed one. It's not a highlight of his life. And yet now David is going to pen a psalm praising the Lord after this ugly situation in his life. And we too can praise the Lord even when we remember something good he did in the midst, we did in the midst of some really bad decisions that we may have made. All of us have done some things that we are not proud of. And some stuff that had no business we have said coming out of the mouth of a child of God. We've put stuff in our bottles, bodies, whether we ate it or drank it or smoked it. We've made some business decisions, some financial decisions without consulting God. They just utterly failed. But yet, after we sat down and thought things over, we know that through it all, of our, through all of our mess, we humble ourselves. We bow down. Why? Because God still made that thing work out for our good. Oh, I said he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. And we can still praise God through everything that goes on, good or bad, in our life. When we do that, we appropriate an acceptable amount of humility. That even when a situation makes us personally look bad, we can still use it. Not to glory in our shame, but to make God look as good in the very presence of an accusing enemy because God is truly good. David, a man after God's own heart, he had a heart of repentance. He cried out to the Lord one day, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. That ought to be many of our cries, even this day, as jacked up as we can be sometimes, even to one another. Amen. Like David, I've learned to bless God at all times, through the good and the bad. He's been good to me despite me. So I have to give him glory. I have to give him praise because he is so worthy. It wasn't always this way with me. I'd sit sometimes on the front pew as a deacon at our church and watching other folks get their praise on. I just couldn't, I just couldn't get it going. But one day, <laughs> As Jamal was leading our youth choir, they were youth choir. They were singing a song, and that part of the song that said "How it so then and it just kept going over and over in my head. And next thing you know, I'm standing up with my arms stretched out wide, and I'm giving God the praise and the glory because I had several flashbacks. And I remember how God delivered me out of this, and how He delivered me out of that. And I no longer had a problem with mustering up some praise because I figured out. The first year of being a deacon, how worthy God was of our prayer. Hallelujah. Let me give you these couple little things I jotted down here to share with you this morning, and we'll be out of here. Praise is a sacrifice. Yeah. Psalms 54 and 6 says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O oh Lord, for it is good. Yes. Praise God for who he is. Yes. He is our father, the creator of all things, the one who loved us so much that he gave Come on now. his only begotten son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. We're still trying to figure that thing out. God gave. That God, the one who has called us out of darkness and to his marvelous light, that God, sacrifice sometimes, y'all. Come out of your comfort zones. 
Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anybody that's around you. But every chance you get, open up your mouth and give them praise. For it is good. And know also that praise is for God's pleasure. Revelation 4 and 11 says that thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Praise is for his pleasure. It's not for you even though it feels good. It's not to make you feel good, but to make him feel good. Choirs sing songs, not necessarily to make you feel good. They sing to God for you. The instruments are played for the pleasure of God as well. Your praise is for his pleasure. Also praise him because he's worthy. Mm. Psalm 18 and 3 declares that I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Is there anybody here who knows that God is worthy of our praise and our worship? Oh, he is worthy. Mm -hmm. Considering all that he's done on our behalf, for that alone he deserves it. Whatever you have been able to accomplish in life, he deserves the praise for it. Whatever successes you have achieved, the good things you have done, God made it possible for you. So you've got to give him praise. You've got to give him praise. Amen. And also be mindful that God inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, have mercy. He's here. Psalm 22 and 3 says that because, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of his people. He lives in the praises of his people. You have to get that. He abides there. That's why every morning everybody should wake up with praise on their lips. Amen. Because God is right in the midst of your praise. There he is. God, you woke us up this morning and we were laying asleep. The alarm clock went off and we were able to hear it. Somebody didn't hear that alarm clock go off. Somebody didn't open up their eyes this morning. Somebody is not going to see this beautiful day that God has made. But here we are in the parking lot. What a beautiful day. Gentle breeze going by. That's a reason to praise God. It's the little things. The little things that we have to praise God for. And since he has given us this beautiful day, make sure that you do something for somebody else who might need to see God's love through you. I spend a lot of time in my car. And as I drive, especially heading to work in the morning, sometimes I have flashbacks. And I become overwhelmed by God's goodness. And I'm crying and trying to drive. And I'm singing his praises and all, all the way down I-64. Somebody was looking at me probably was wondering what is world going on with that crazy man. But God loves our praise. I got to give it to him. And when I do, I can feel the spirit of the Lord all around me. What a mighty God we serve. He's so wonderful. I love praising God together, too. See, great things happen, I've learned, when people come together and praise God. In the Bible, people marched around the walls of Jericho worshiping and praising God. And the walls came tumbling down. In the book of Acts, Paul and Silas, when they were thrown into prison, shackled, feet and stocks, and locked up. Y'all know the story. At midnight, they prayed. Some happened as they sang hymns and other spiritual songs. The Bible says that there was a great earthquake and the foundation of the prison shook and the prison doors were open and everyone who was locked up, their bands were loosed as well. And is there anybody here who knows that you need something to be shaken up in your own life? I know I do. Well, the Bible gives us an example of what to do. <laughs> Every chance you get, 
get with a couple of saints. Pray the prayer of faith. Sing some hymns, sing some spiritual songs, and watch God move on your behalf. Because where two or three are gathered, the word says, there he is in the midst. What a mighty God we serve. He is worthy of the praise. And lastly, praise him for his mighty acts. Psalms 150 and 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. He's excellent. I don't know anybody. I don't know everybody's testimonies. And you don't know all of mine. But I do know that everybody has one. And sometimes it's a real good one too. Because God always doing something good. And he is always doing something mighty good in all of our lives. All of us may have had a need that another human being could not fix or repair. Mm -hmm. All of us have seen the things happen in our lives that we look back and say that had to have been God who did that. Hey Amen. I see I have some witnesses. <laughs> You can testify to the fact that when you look back over your life, you can say that I know and that I know that I know God did that thing. Only God could have healed my body. Only God could have opened that door and allowed me to get that job. I'm a witness to that. Only God could have prevented me from not being killed in that accident. Only God could have saved your marriage when it was on the rocks. Only God could have kept you safe and sound to this so-called pandemic of COVID-19. Only God mm -mm -mm. could have kept your mind in perfect peace when you thought you were going crazy. Only God could have taken that addiction to drugs and alcohol or whatever it was. Only God could have taken that thing away. Only God could have kept us in times like these. Many of us should be dead and gone a long time ago, sleeping in our grave, but we're still here. Oh God, he is truly worthy of the praise. It was only God who before the foundation of the world provided us a savior whose name is Jesus. The one, hallelujah. Well, when you say that name, something happened. <laughs> oh, that one named Jesus. The one who said in the book, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. For it is not possible for the blood of bull and goats to take away the sins of the world. But a body thou hast prepared for me. I'm just talking about Jesus. Had us on his mind over 2,021 years ago on a hill called Calvary. Yeah, he had us on his mind. See, as they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet and attached them to a tree fashioned after a cross, they lifted him up for all to see. I'm so thankful that they did that. They must not have heard that Jesus said, If I be lifted up, unto me. So they lifted him up. Arms oh, stretched wide. Just like they are even today. Arms oh, still stretched wide. Hallelujah. Thrust the spear in the side. Out came water. Out came blood. Thank you God for the blood. For without the shedding of his precious blood there would have been no remission of our sins. Jesus said it is finished. The work that he came to do was done. He gave up the ghost on the cross. He hung his head. And then he died. Why aren't you all glad that that's not how the story ended? Three days later, God raised him from the dead. And when he got up, he had all power in his hands. Victorious over death, hell, 
and the grave. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. We serve a risen Savior, a living, breathing Lord of all creation, with a name that's above every name. The name of Jesus. This name is above COVID-19. This name is above in Delta variant and any other variants. His name is above diabetes and heart disease. His name is above hypertension. His name is above every illness, sicknesses, and disease that especially our people are susceptible to. Jesus, the name that's above every name. And because Jesus still lives, Oh, I hear that hymn in my head. I can still face tomorrow because all fear is gone. You see, I know who holds the future. And life is worth living. Just, he said, because he lives. Hallelujah. And for that, I give him all the praise. I give him all the glory because I know that he's worthy and I know that he deserves it. What are you doing with his praise? Is there anybody here today that can celebrate the fact that he woke you up this morning? That he and your strength, and you have food to eat and clothes to put on, beautiful cars to drive, places to live in. You got money, even if it's funny sometimes and your change gets strange, but he is still good and still worthy to be praised, still answering your prayers, still keeping you in perfect peace. He keeps on blessing us over and over again. I've got to give him praise. I've got to praise him. To let everything that have breath praise the Lord. He's worthy of it all. And then, son, I got to tell you, like verse 8 says, Oh, taste, I taste it, and see that the Lord is good. I know he's good. At 56 years of age, it took me a while to get there, but I finally know that I would not be here if it had not been for his grace and it had not been for his mercy. Amen. Brand new mercies we see every morning. Thank God for his word. We thank God because it keeps us, it sustains us, it delivers us over and over again. That's the word, y'all. He is worthy of the praise. God bless you. Come on, if you got breath in your body, honk your horn and give God glory. Amen, 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 and amen. We want to thank Reverend Ken Jones for bringing that word about praise. And if you got a testimony this morning, I want you to honk your horn and let the East End know God has been good to me. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the word that came forth through song. Thank you for the word that came forth from the preacher. Thank you for the word that came forth through greetings when we when we entered into this space, God. I pray that if there's a soul out there that does not know you, God, that in this moment they make a decision to come to know you, not to join a church, God, but to join the family and the body of Christ. I thank you for the souls that you're saving. I thank you for the body that you're healing. I thank you for the for the turnaround that you're giving to people. I thank you for the households that are experiencing deliverance right now because of you. God, we come to say thank you. We come to glorify you. We come to magnify you. You're the only one that can take care of us. You're the only one that can keep us. You're the only one 
that can do what we need done in our lives. So God, as we go down from this place, thank you for the hedge of protection that continues to stay around us. Thank you for keeping us unified. Thank you for loving us. And because you love us, God, we can love one another. Continue to allow us to be the lighthouse for you in this community. Bless this community. Bless all the churches. Bless all the community leaders. Bless all the organizations that are getting us together to vote and all of those kinds of things. God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we say thank you. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your Facebook. God bless your lighthouse. Listen, listen, listen. If you want a fellowship, you can, those of you who are up the front, if you want a fellowship, we're going to ask that you just uh, go out of the gates and maybe come back in the back way. You can just park your car, but we don't want anybody to be blocked in. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here at the Lighthouse.